Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you might hear, I've got a little bit of a hoarse voice. I've had a very busy day, lots of travel, happy to be back. And um, when I got back, I noticed this post that kind of was getting a lot of attention online regarding Knight Rider, regarding a very specific uh, sketch of Kit and the true origins of that sketch. So I wanted to um, just take a moment and share um, what I know about that sketch and how it ties into the origins of Knight Rider. It's really kind of neat, but there is some misinformation out there. So I kind of wanted to set the record straight on that, just so you guys know the actual truth of what happened way back in late 81, early 82, when they were still developing the series. So let's go ahead and talk about the famous John Shinella kit sketch. <laughs> All right, so for those of you who haven't seen this post, let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, online, there's a, uh, a post going around. There's a picture of what appears to be a cocktail napkin with a sketch of Kit on the napkin. And that napkin sketch is said to be the original sketch that John Chanella drew back whenever they were designing the look of Kit. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with John Shinella, John Shinella uh, worked at GM for many, many years. He was, he was uh, Pontiac's um, chief designer and was responsible for designing the third generation Firebird Trans Am that came out in 1982. For those of you who go the, to the uh, Trans Am Nationals, some of the other uh, Firebird-centric shows, John has been um, a presence at a lot of them for many years. Um, so whenever I, I saw this sketch, and I, ha I had a chance to meet John a couple years ago, but um, I'm in a unique situation because uh, with, with this whole thing because I've actually spoken with, AJ and I've spoken with kind of all of the key players involved in this specific story. So what I want to start with is I want to read to you a little bit about uh, John Chanel's involvement in Knight Rider. This comes from a 2014 article in High Performance Pontiac Magazine. So we've got a number of different players involved in this story. We've got John Chanel, all right? We've got Glenn Larson, the series creator, Harker Wade, who uh, was a producer on the pilot and helped get the show off the ground. Um, and we've also got the Vista Group, you guys have probably, if you've seen many of the videos on here, you've heard us talk about Vista Group. If you're not familiar, Vista Group was the product placement firm that was responsible, among other things, for securing the first three Trans Ams used in the pilot for kit, um, as well as the flag semi and a bunch of other stuff. So um, the president of Vista Group was a man named Eric Dahlquist. Um, Eric is no longer with us, uh, but AJ and I had a chance to, to really get to know him, uh, I guess it was about 13, 14 years ago, and we kept in touch with him up until his death. And that's really how we were able to, um, you know, be the caretakers of the Vista Group archives, is because of the relationship we formed with, uh, with Eric and one of the other people that used to work at Vista Group. So, um, and then the, the, the final kind of key player is, of course, Michael Chaffee who uh, Michael Chaffee was the original designer of Kit. All right, so I'm going to read to you this, and then we'll kind of dissect it and kind of tell you the truth about what's going on with this napkin drawing. As um, work was being done to secure approval for the placement um, of the Knight Rider cars, John Chanel, a head of Pontiac's design studio and the man responsible for the Trans Am, made a trip to Los Angeles and met with Harker Wade, and um, and uh, the Vista Group in um, at the Vista Group offices. At that meeting, Harker described the desired look for the nose of the car, 
with the now iconic red light that cycled back and forth. Shanella picked up a napkin from the coffee table we were sitting around, took out his pen and quickly did a rough sketch of the car's nose, incorporating the light and other slight changes needed in the fascia and hood to accommodate it while still retaining the Trans Am's distinctive look. That's it. That's the car. That's exactly what Glenn wants, I remember Harker Wade saying. Today, Harker asks, do you know where that the cycling red light came from? It was modeled after the Cylons from Battlestar Galacta, which we, we uh, do know. And interestingly enough, he goes on to say that light, by the way, would prove to be a source of never-ending headaches for the film crew during the show. Interestingly enough, we're currently putting the finishing touches on another Top 10 Things You Didn't Know About Knight Rider video, which is going to be really cool. And one of those things has to do exactly with that, with the scanner and the issues that they had. So you're going to not want to, not going to, want to miss that. Um, and then he goes on to say, Chanella would later provide more detailed drawings of the car. In fact, says Harkerway, John gave us designs that were supposed to be like down the line. So as the production Trans Am changed, we could change kit. No one knows what happened to those drawings. All right. So, um, and then it goes on to say, once the three Trans Ams were built at the Van Nuys studio, um, they were whisked away. Um, two of them went to car customizer John Ward. And John Ward built the first um, front fascia of the car. The one, and you see it kind of in the pilot a little bit, the one that looks more like a stock Trans Am with the elongated hood, a thinner scanner. The Trans Am uh, grills in the bumper are smoothed out. Um, and then that third car went to Michael Chaffee so he could build the interior of the, the hero car, the dash, the overhead, and lower consoles. Um, okay, so he also goes on to say, um, working with, uh, Chanel's, Chanel's detailed design drawings, it took John Ward about six weeks to complete the work on the front nose, despite an ongoing litany of changes issued by Glenn Larson. Um, I think the six weeks time frame, based on what we know, is a little long. I think it was more like three weeks, maybe four, that they had to design the car. It was, it was a lot shorter than six weeks. Um, then he goes on to say, Chanel also provided interior dimensions and engineering data to Michael Chaffe to design the dashboard. Notice he didn't say he provided him any sketches because he didn't provide sketches for the interior, only um, dimensions and, and, and engineering data. Because remember, John Chanel um, designed the third gen Trans Am. So he knew that car inside and out. Um, all right, so that kind of sets the stage for all of this. Now, um, to kind of put it in perspective, um, so Eric Dahlquist at the Vista Group, prior to Knight Rider, was actually good friends with John Shanella and good friends with Harker Wade. Um, I believe Eric told us that he attended the same church as Harker Wade. So they knew each other for a very long time. And I want to say John Shanella is is uh the godfather of one of eric's kids so that whole group they were very tight-knit so when glenn larson was putting together this show that would become knight rider he was working with harker wade um you know on the side as as a supervising producer uh larson and wade went back you know before knight rider so they worked together to kind of put it off the ground and when um, Larson decided that he wanted the Trans Am, obviously Harker was involved with that. And I'd imagine Harker said, I know the guys that can make this happen. Because Vista Group had a contract with Pontiac, along with GMC and a bunch of other um, car manufacturers. So if you think about it like this, you have Larson and, um, and Harker Wade, right? And um, they're working together on Knight Rider. But Harker is also good friends with Eric Dahlquist at the Vista Group. Harker knows that uh, Vista Group has a contract with Pontiac. So naturally, Harker's going to engage with Eric Dahlquist to try and make that happen. And that's exactly what, what did happen. Eric and the Vista Group worked tirelessly, got told no a few times, but were able to secure those first three Trans Ams from Pontiac, uh, reallocated from other dealers that were supposed to get those cars to, um, to put in the show. So, um, 
so that's that's how kind of that all came together. Now, um, before before I think even Michael Shafe got involved in this whole project, um, you know, John Shanella was brought in because again of the connection that John had with Vista Group, and um, you know, Eric was close with him. Plus, um, in order to get these three cars, one of the stipulations was that they couldn't alter the cars so much that they didn't look like the new Trans Am. So John Shanella was kind of the liaison between, um, you know, Glenn Larson and General Motors to ensure that the car still looked like a Trans Am. So this meeting between Shanella and um, Harker Wade and the Vista Group did it did happen and they did um Chanella did pick up a cocktail napkin and he did draw out kit but the napkin that is floating around the internet that people see the picture of it is not the one Chanella drew in late 81 early 82 and it actually doesn't even take much to realize it was a different one if you look at that napkin Look at the front nose on Kit. That's Michael Chaffee's later front nose design, not John Ward's initial design. I'd imagine the original napkin probably looked something like the original front nose that we see that John Ward put together. Because whenever they started filming the show, they actually filmed a 30-minute pilot presentation in April of 1982, and that's where we see the John Ward style front nose on kit. But while John was building the, the exterior of the cars, Michael Chaffee was doing the interior uh, on a completely different car. In fact, the car that, that Michael Chaffee delivered to Glenn Larson was still a stock black and gold Trans Am on the outside. It was not even converted at that point. So they sold the series, and then in between when they filmed that pilot presentation and when they went back to film the rest of the pilot, which would have been about July of 82, that's when Glenn Larson said, hey, Michael, you did a great job on the interior. We're looking to have the, the front nose kind of redone from what John Ward did. So that's when Chaffe came in and redid the, uh, the front nose to the one we, you know, we currently see. So... Technically, that napkin can't be the original one because it was supposedly the original napkin was drawn before Michael Chaffee's front nose design was ever even thought of, right? Um, so, I mean, right there, that tells that tells you that's not the original napkin. Um, and even there's there's even this uh, photo of this miniature clay buck of the front of the car that was done early on in the conception of the show. And you can see there that it's not Chaffee's nose design, but it's closer to John Ward's nose design. All right, so putting this kind of all together and, and summing it up, so where did this picture of this napkin come from with this incorrect kit on it that was drawn by John Chanella? This napkin was drawn by John Chanella. So in... 2014, this high-performance Pontiac article I was just referencing. In 2014, uh, we were contacted by High Performance Pontiac, and we provided information about our two screen-used cars. They're in this article, because they were kind of doing an Origins of Knight Rider um, article. It was a two-part article in, in two months of the magazine. And um, uh, whenever they were telling the story... Whenever uh, the, the guys from Vista Group and Harker Wade were telling the story, they were talking about this napkin. And um, Eric at the Vista Group said, I'm positive I have that napkin somewhere in the archives or in a, in a filing cabinet. And he looked and he looked and he looked. And unfortunately, he was unable to find that napkin. So um, it was decided, since they were telling the story, they wanted some visual aid. So they actually had John Chanella um, redraw on a cocktail napkin, this picture of Kit. But what I think happened is when John redrew this, obviously the first one he did like 40 years prior, he's not going to remember every little detail and how it looked. My guess is he looked at a picture of one of the original cars or a replica that had Chaffee's nose on it, and he drew it to match that. And that's why that that's why you see that napkin um but it's not quite right so 
um, it is a true John Chanella drawing, but it's not the original napkin. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. I hope um, you enjoyed that. Um, obviously, this is the original. This is the, the Michael Chaffee design front nose here. Um, this is the uh, what we call the Hoff nose. You've seen it. We did a video on it a while ago. This is the one that um, came off of one of the original cars. And after the show ended, they mounted it on this board, kind of like uh, a taxidermy would, I don't know, mount a a deer or a bear kit got mounted on this wooden board. And then this was gifted to David Hasselhoff. Um, he owned this from the end of the series until when did we buy it? 2014, 2016. I don't know, somewhere around there. And we've had it ever since it's got an original scanner in it. Um, these are not original fog lights. The studio put those in. They're just whatever. Anyways, this video is not about this, but I thought this would make a good backdrop since we're kind of talking about, uh, the front nose of kit. But um, that's, uh, that's what I got for today. So hopefully you learned a little bit of something. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this. And uh, we'll be back real soon with that uh, another top 10 things you didn't know about Knight Rider video and a whole lot more. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. It's me, Kit. When I'm not out fighting crime, I like to follow my friends at nightriderhistorians.com. Check it out. <laughs>